railway boxcar and took up a rather vulnerable position in a sort of pit, there was great excitement in the neighbourhood. If you go to see the lions in the zoo, you have to pay, but here was a free show, except that the home guards got all the best places. Obviously, they were eager to defend Clapham from this new danger. He himself was apparently pretty bored, or maybe he was just scared. Anyway, he obviously sincerely regretted having pulled the communication cord in the train, or however it was he escaped. All he wanted now was to be taken home. That was easily arranged. A most intelligent lion, really. Mind his tail. A rare event indeed, with a happy ending for all concerned. News from Cairo, as it is today, includes a wartime version of the much-travelled tourist. Having no suitcases to be covered with labels, these men cover themselves with the names of all the places they've been to. Places made famous not by tourist agencies and globe trotters, but by the Eighth Army. They'll make a brave show on our beaches in peacetime if they get themselves permanently tattooed. Girls are at it too. She was a London typist, then she went to South Africa, and the newsreel cameraman found her in Cairo. Widely travelled, all of them, with boyfriends somewhere in the services. They don't forget them and they intend that nobody else will either. Cairo now has a cycling club for servicemen started by Staff Sergeant Walker, veteran of a famous London club. It's reported to be very popular among men on leave. New members are constantly joining the club, and even when they're not expert racing cyclists, at least they're triers. While the field flashes on, regardless of the heat, till they reach their objective to take a breather and enjoy the view, he does his best to sprint after them and catch them up. Grim determination gets in there eventually, but it's obviously been a bit of a sweat. Having succeeded in riding all the way there, he decided he'd damn well ride back too. Personalities in the news include Major General Robert Laycock, DSO, who has succeeded Admiral Lord Louis Mountbatten as Chief of Combined Operations at the age of 36. He's seen here at his headquarters with his secretary, Paymaster Lieutenant Commander Linda Hill, and his senior air officer, Air Vice Marshal Graham. Everyone will wish General Laycock the best of luck in his outstandingly important command. And everyone would like to congratulate LG on his marriage with Miss Frances Stevenson. Bride has been the ex-Premier's private secretary since 1913. She was with him when he was Chancellor of the Exchequer, Minister of Munitions, War Secretary, and finally Prime Minister. These pictures were taken at church after the wedding. May Lloyd George and his bride enjoy many years of happiness together. We are in process of taking the whole of Italy, General Alexander is reported to have said, and it's a slow process. With the roads mined and the bridges across the rivers blown up, the 5th Army has still been making good progress. Beyond Naples, the river Volturno forms a natural obstacle, and of course the Germans made a thorough job of destroying the bridges. But the 5th crossed the Volturno and this is the story of how they did it. The first elements went over in infantry assault boats by night, but more were still going over in daylight. They formed the first bridgehead, establishing themselves in positions on the northern bank, driving the enemy back and clearing the way for engineers, British and American, to throw bridges across the river under cover of gunfire 